Amen. Good morning, DCN. Good morning. This is the day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Would you turn with me in your Bibles today to the book of Mark? Mark chapter 13, verse 1 to 13 is our text, the book of Mark. Mark 13, verse 1 to 13 is our text for today. Today's message, as you're finding the text, is entitled, Watch Out! Everyone say, Watch Out! Watch Out! out. Jesus is giving us a warning about the end times, and so we need to be careful Uh, How many of us have ever traveled to the United Kingdom or ever been to the city called London? All right, great. If you've been there, you may have had the privilege of going on uh, a transportation thing called the Tube, which is the subway. Uh, And when I was younger, because I lived in London for a while, and we would go on the Tube, and I didn't understand English at the time, but I would always hear this obnoxious noise every time the, the... the subway, well, the, the tube came in. Nah, nah, nah. I'm like, what is that noise? Nah, nah, nah. And as soon as I began to kind of listen in, uh, the, the person on the, the speaker was saying, mind the gap. Mind the gap. See, there is a gap between the tube and uh, where I'm standing. And so uh, it's, it's warning me not to put my foot in there or not to drop any of my things in there. Mind the gap. It's a warning, you see. It's a warning for us to not fall in the gap, not fall by the wayside. And likewise, Jesus is giving a discourse, uh, and it's called the Olivet Discourse, because he's giving this discourse on the Mount of Olives, where Tom and Linda were there just a couple of weeks ago, the Mount of Olives. So with that in mind, let us turn to the text. If you have found the text, please say with me, Christ likeness. Amen. And would you rise as I read God's word? Mark 13, verse 1 to 13. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claim, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of the wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death. And a father, his child, children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may take a seat. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence in this place, O Lord. And we ask now that you illuminate our hearts, Holy Spirit, so that we may receive your word, 
your truth. May we have good soil this morning to accept the seeds of truth. And I pray, Lord, that you would give us a harvest of 30, 60, 100 fold for your glory, O Lord, and for our joy and for our sanctification to be more Christ-like, O Lord to find the real me that you have created, to go back to the original design, to be restored into your image, O Lord. So have your way in us. Help us to heed your warnings this morning, to be watchful, to be mindful, to be careful, to be cautious, and to know that we are living in the end times and that Jesus is coming soon. So, Father, help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to receive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Olivet Discourse is is chapter 13, and we'll be spending about three weeks on this chapter. So feel free to read forward and read again and, and study, because I don't have time to go through every verse, and I'll share with you some observances from verse 1 to 13 today. Dive in with me to verse 1 and 2. As he was leaving the temple, this is Jesus, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, rabbi, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. See, the disciples, most of them came from uh, the countryside. So seeing this great temple in Jerusalem, it's like me, let's say a country boy, going into this city and seeing the prudential building. Whoa, that's hot. And seeing, seeing uh, Fenway Park, whoa, that's massive. They could probably fit 20,000 people in there. And, and so the disciples are the same way. They, look, teacher, there's, whoa, look at these big stones and big buildings. They are very much excited of what they see on the outside. So Jesus replies, and Jesus is always kind, isn't he? He says, verse 2, do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Hold on, what? The Prudential Building's going down and Fenway Park's not going to be there anymore? What do you mean, Jesus? These big stones and big buildings, what do you mean? They really didn't ask, what do you mean? (laughs) They asked, when's that going to happen? Tell me, give me some inside information, Jesus. But we need to ponder of what Jesus is saying. See, the disciples see buildings. They see big infrastructures, and that's a good thing. Well, I've seen big infrastructures in my own lifetime. In Europe, there are big cathedrals, right? Uh, Some of them, they've been building it for 400 plus years. I went to one about 20 years ago, and they said they were still building. I go inside, and I look, and it's massive. The only problem is, worshipers aren't gathering inside those buildings. Tourists come. They pay money, put five pounds in, and they walk in, and the cathedrals, which were built for worship, are now tourist attractions. Some of them have become libraries. Some of them have become nightclubs. Mm, 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 right? Like, I mean, can you imagine? They built these places of worship and now they become mosques, places of worship for other things. Jesus looks right through the disciples. For Jesus is looking for true disciples, true worshipers. Even for us in this day and age, We like big things and flashy things and shiny things. Nothing wrong with those things as long as they serve its purpose. Uh, We are glad to have this great building and God's blessed us with a great campus. But if we did not worship Jesus in this place, it would just be a building. Right? But because we have worshipers that have gathered to worship Jesus, everyone raise your hands and say, we are worshiping Jesus. And only him. That's what makes the church. That's the purpose of why God has given us this campus. 
So Jesus is looking right through that and saying, in, a, in, in time, all of this will go away. I wonder if some of us come to church on Sunday morning as tourists or as consumers. Oh, I, I like their music. I, I don't like the preacher. He wears a gold cross. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't say that. But some people might, and they, they nitpick here and nitpick there, and it's not about you. And I'm not sorry to say that. It's about God. It's about our creator God who gave his one and only son for us, who loves us with an everlasting love and who has given us the Holy Spirit to know Jesus and to glorify the Father. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. Everyone say, it's all about Jesus. So if you feel hurt today because you didn't like the music or you didn't like the preacher, please, it's all about Jesus. Let Jesus talk to you. Let his word penetrate your heart today. Amen? At the same time, we recognize from the disciples' reaction to the big buildings is that they have this wow factor. Wow, this is big. Wow, this is large. Wow, this is flashy. Wow doesn't get you into heaven, by the way. Don't be wowed by things that will rust away. But be wowed by the Savior who lives forever. Are you wowed by Jesus are you wowed by his word, his love letter to you? Every time you open it, he speaks to you by his spirit. He illuminates your heart and you're like, wow, Lord, I see the disciples in me. I see that I'm following after big things, but you're looking for my heart. See, God sees your heart. You can't hide anything from him. He sees. So it's okay to be vulnerable with God. And it's okay to be vulnerable with your church family. So the disciples in verse 3 and 4, they, they say, tell us, when is this going to happen? And Jesus gives his discourse from verse 5. Jesus said to them, verse 5, we read, watch out that no one deceives you. See, uh, the word watch out uh, in the original Greek is blepo. I'm not going to ask you to say it. But if you want to, you can. Well done, Monique. <laughs> Blepo comes in verse 5 and verse 9, and, and, and it means watch out, look out, be on guard. It's a strong word. It's a warning. Why? Because in verse 6, Jesus says, Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. I am he means there are going to be many, many people that come and say, I am the Christ. If somebody knocks on your door, let's say, and says, good morning, sir. I am the reincarnated Jesus, and I really need to talk to you. Well, how would you respond to that? Well, many different responses. Uh, let me share with you how I would respond. I would say, well, good morning to you as well, sir. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, would you like to come in and have a cup of tea? Uh, well, I think we just need to have a talk. And uh, I, I just want to learn more about what you're saying. Do you really know Jesus? You know, and, and then we could talk about it. There are many, many people on this planet today that say, I am the Christ. You're like, wow, that's blasphemy. Yes, it is. And yet people are following these self-proclaimed messiahs. We are living in the end times. Jesus knew this, so he's forewarning us. But it's not only people. I've thought about this. I am he. Be careful of these people because they will deceive you. I'm thinking about the culture of nowadays. See, the culture might say, I am the Christ. The pop culture, the hip culture, the hop culture, whatever culture it is, the secular uh, ideas and isms, they will come in and say, I am your savior, follow me. Big, fancy, shiny things, follow me. Oh, you need the latest things, follow me. 
There are many, many things in this world that continue to lure you in and want to deceive you so that you will put your gaze not on Jesus, but on other things, frivolous things, on material things that will not last, not even a hundred years. Think about this. The phones that you carry, they're very smartphones, correct? How smart will they be in a hundred years? It'll be like a fossil, right? But we still get attracted to those things. Jesus is saying, watch out, blepo, watch out, be careful. Don't follow the shiny things. Follow Jesus. Follow me, Jesus is saying. So how are we following Jesus today? Are we following Jesus today? Are we following him with all our heart? mind, soul, and strength, and loving God and loving neighbor as we love ourselves? Amen? Amen. Or can we do better? Amen. Amen. Much better, right? (laughs) There's room for improvement, and I'm preaching to myself. There is room for improvement, even for me. I want to follow Jesus. I study the Word, and I've been called as the preacher of God's Word and as a pastor, but sometimes there's things that just get in my view, and I'm like, oh, I get distracted here, and I get distracted there, so what do I do? Let me tell you what I do. I come back to my seat right here. I say, God, there's so many distractions. So much noise is coming into my heart, and I need you to clean house. And by God's grace and by his spirit, he washes me. Did I mention to you, uh, as I was praying, I said, God, the burden of ministry is too heavy. And you're like, Well, pastor, what do you mean it's too heavy? You only work on Sunday mornings from 10 a.m. till noon. You don't do anything on any other day. If you think like that, come and talk to me. (laughs) I'll show you my schedule, right? Nonetheless, I said to God, God, ministry is heavy. Why? Because I love your people. But my love is so limited. I want to love them as you love them, but my capacity to love is so small. Help me, Lord. And the Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart, and he said, Son, you can give that burden to me. I'll carry that for you. And I said, Lord, thank you. And I felt this burden lift, and God reminded me of his word, Come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. And I I felt rested. Now, how long did that last? (laughs) A day. So again, I go back to my seat and I cry out to God. and, And God's mercy is fresh every day, by the way. It's like fresh bread. Oh, fresh aroma. And I come back to his presence. I come back to his word. And I come back to the Holy Spirit. And he fills me in you. And I'm again ready to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perhaps you should try that. Five minutes on your knees, praying to God. Five minutes sitting down, reading the word of God. Five minutes standing up, worshiping God. We call that the what? The five, five, five. Some of you have been trying that. I know some of you are doing the 10, 10, 10. And I bless those people who are continuing to grow in their devotion with Jesus. Jesus wants us to know that deception is all around us. Deception can come with distraction. Remember, every time you want to engage with Jesus, but you think of other things, do not be deceived. Blepo, watch out. Be on guard. You see, deception, uh, this word blepo is also used in Revelation 20, verse 3. Let me read it for you. Uh, He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from the deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. See, deception is from the enemy. Being led away from the truth, being led away to error, is what the enemy wants to do to us. For the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. And that's why we need to watch out. 
For when we do watch out, God's blessing is right there. And we're able to embrace that. There were two girls. They were going to the mall. And they went to the mall and they uh, hit up a conversation with this stranger, a predator. And they were led astray. What happened? They exchanged numbers. And these two girls believed that this man, this predator, could love them more than their parents. More love and more care. And, and what happened? They were lured in and trafficked. One girl was able to come home. The other girl is still missing. What about the parents of these girls? How are they processing this? How does God feel for his children and his creation when they are led astray? When they feel like this thing or this person can save me, can love me more than my creator God and king. And they are led astray. They go missing. Yet the father's heart is this. He waits. And by his spirit, he woos and invites and knocks and continues to speak love to them. Come back, son. Come back, daughter. I'm here for you. I am ready to forgive you. As long as you come and repent and confess your sins. That's the Father's heart, isn't it? Another example of deception comes from Matthew 15, 14. Uh, Jesus says, leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. This is Jesus talking about the Pharisees because the Pharisees were the leaders. The leaders that were taught the law and, and said, this is God's word and we need to do this and you need to keep 613 laws and all of these things. And yet if the blind lead the blind, they will fall into a pit. See, don't, don't you ever think that because I'm standing here that you can just blindly follow. Remember, when I ask you to open up the Word of God, I would like you to open it. You check if I'm reading correctly. If I miss something, you come and talk to me. Of course, I will do my due diligence. That's my responsibility. But you need to be watchful. Because erroneous thinking comes like yeast and it blows up and it will lead you to faraway places. There are many cults in this world. Do you know that? It's scary out there. Cults lead you away from Jesus. They think or they will proclaim it's all about Jesus and da 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 da. But if you go into their doctrine and theology, it's actually very selfish, it's, it doesn't have a good ending. Don't fall for the people who say, I know when the end of the world will come. I've done my math. Well, I'm glad you know your math, but the Bible says no one knows the hour or the time. Only the Father does. And you can pray for them. Bring them to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Don't just cut them off. They're all created beings in God's image, so we pray for them and welcome them in. Jesus continues to warn us. It's interesting. On my way to uh, the seminary where I studied, there's a, there's a nice building, and it looks like a church building. But it's occupied by people that have nothing to do with Jesus because it was sold, and now it's a home. It's a house. If we aren't watchful, what's going to happen to this building in 20, 30, 40 years' time? What's going to happen to our congregation and our church? Are you confident that we're raising up Preachers, missionaries, teachers of the Bible? Or are you just, I'm just okay with my own salvation? I've got my ticket to heaven. That's all I need. 
I have faith in God and He's forgiven me, so I'm going to heaven. But today, I believe what God is saying to us is that we need more faith, this kind of faith. Not only for us to go to heaven by believing in the Son, Jesus, pleading on the blood, but to have the faith to embrace heaven in our hearts today, right now, and to live the kingdom life. Why is it so quiet in here? Are we all awake? We need faith to possess heaven this morning. Amen? Are you willing to take that extra step? Because it's important. Because there's many, many things in this world that will sway us to the left and to the right. Again, blepo, watch out. Be careful. Be careful. Verse 9, let me read for you. Again, blepo comes out. You must be on your guard, Jesus says. You'll be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. Verse 10 and 11. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Everyone say Holy Spirit. In this world, we see that the church is being persecuted in different areas of the world, like North Korea and in Afghanistan and, and the Middle East. Uh, people are being persecuted. They're being killed for their faith. I wonder if or when persecution comes our way for believing in Jesus, that we would have the fortitude to stand strong and to stand our ground. Listen to me. We live in a great nation right now. Praise the Lord for the United States of America. And please pray for our leadership. Amen? Amen. That's the biblical mandate. It's not about you liking them or not liking them. It's about following what God says. So we'll do that. And we do pray for our leadership. But what if one day... They give out laws and say, it's prohibited for you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you find your pastor preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they take your pastor away and send him to prison. Please pray for me that I would have the fortitude to continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I will pray for you that you will have the fortitude to continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to your neighbors and to your friends. Now, this is distant from where we are right now because we're really comfortable, aren't we? We come to church on Sundays. We have air conditioning, cushioned seats. We even give you Bibles. But remember this. The end times, we are living in them right now. Jesus is saying, Blepo, watch out. Be ready. I love how Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit don't worry about what you're about to say. Just speak, and it's going to be the Holy Spirit that speaks through you. The only problem is we don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We believe in a false trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Bible. I am not saying the Holy Bible is less than. But the triune God we believe in through the Word of God is this. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But we distance ourselves from the Holy Spirit. Oh, we, uh, we, we don't do that kind of stuff in our church. We're, we're more civilized. We don't do Holy Spirit. We do Holy Bible. Well, God bless you, but read the Holy Bible. Holy Spirit is all over here. He's from creation. He hovered over the waters, and he gives life, and he gives breath. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, his name is Ruach. He's the breath of life. He breathed into the nostrils. I'm getting too excited. I love the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I love the Holy Bible too. But 
the Holy Bible can't take the place of Holy Spirit. See, when persecution comes and, and we are continue to be molded and shaped by the Holy Spirit, it's going to be a natural response. Even when people persecute you, you'll respond with grace and not by retaliation. We need the Holy Spirit. Oh, sing with me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, mold me, break me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Jesus says, uh, just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an insider information about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell where there is sin. His first name is Holy. I need to repeat this because it's very important. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell where there is sin. His first name is holy. So we need the refiner's fire. We need the illumination of God so that we can see our sins and confess them and repent. You know why I preach repentance almost every week? Because I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know why I come before the Lord in repentance every day? It's because I need the Holy Spirit. Without his leading and guidance, it's meaningless. It doesn't matter if I've read the Bible many, many times and I've studied theology and what. It doesn't matter if the Spirit of God is not indwelling in me and giving me his life-giving breath. It doesn't matter if there's 5,000 people that I preach to. If the Holy Spirit does not use me, I am meaningless. It is meaningless. And that's why I want you to be a people of repentance that bear the fruit, you and I both, so that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that when persecution comes and when you stand before governors and kings, don't worry about what you have to say. Just speak because you're already so tight and close and intimate with the Holy Spirit that he just flows out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is available to us. He is our comforter with a capital C. He is our helper with a capital H. He is our counselor with a capital C. We need his counsel. We need his help. And we all need his comfort. Amen? Yesterday, we celebrated the life of one of our own, Cheryl Ball. In the morning, we celebrated her life, and we gave her a good send-off. She's living. Oh, death, where is your sting? Amen? And in the afternoon, we celebrated the life because we had a baby sprinkle for Otonye. And from the cradle to the grave... God is full of life and the Holy Spirit is sweeping over us and we are so excited because we are being led by him. And we pray this, God, if you say go, we will go. If you say stay, we will stay. And just like Moses prayed, without your presence, we will not go anywhere. At least that's my prayer. Blepo. Watch out. 
We're living in the end times, and we need the Spirit of God to lead us. Amen? Amen. The Spirit of God also loves humility, teachability, the people who are ready to accept him, because Holy Spirit is a person, you see. He's not just some thing. Please don't say it to the Holy Spirit. He's Greek. He's a person. Let's humbly approach him and say, I surrender. I submit myself to you, Holy Spirit. Fill me up. Fill me up. Holy Spirit, fill me up. And so Jesus promises, as we watch out, the Holy Spirit will help us. Verse 13, Jesus also says this, All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When's the last time you got persecuted for your faith? When's the last time you shared your faith? Do your neighbors know that you love Jesus? Do your co-workers know, or or are you a double agent? You go to work, and you fit right in. You talk like them, and you laugh at their dirty jokes because you want to be a part of the crowd. I'm sure none of us here. But God, through his word, is instructing us. As you live out this life of being watchful and following Jesus closely and intentionally, all men will hate you because of Jesus. Now, if all men hate you because of your stupidity, that's okay. Please don't be stupid. Be nice to people. You know, don't, don't hate them. Be nice. I mean, we need to be people of character. Amen? Amen. We need to be people of character that, that love God and love people. But people will hate you because of Jesus. And I'm not saying be obnoxious. I'm saying be kind and gentle and loving. Jesus, follow him, his ways. Be prayerful as Jesus was prayerful. My hope and prayer for me is that I would be able to live out this word, that I would stand firm to the end and see the salvation of my God. I want to lead a group of people that will stand firm and not be moved because we are planted and grounded in the truth of God's word. No culture, no ism, no ideology, no new ideas, no science, no technology. But we are firmly planted in God's word and his truth. And we say yes to Jesus. Lord, give us that kind of faith. Lord, give me that kind of fortitude and strength so that we may withstand what the culture throws at us. They may call you names for believing in Jesus. They may actually throw you into prison for believing in Jesus. I heard not so long ago that there were some Egyptian Christians that were uh, captured by ISIS, uh, a terrorist group. And I think there were about 11 of them. My, My memory doesn't serve me well, but... When they were being executed, there were 12 people that were being executed. Come to find out, there was one man that was uh, imprisoned with the 11 Christians, but this man believed in Muhammad. But this man saw how much these 11 Christians loved one another and loved God, that at that time of the execution, the captors said to him, if you deny Jesus, And if you believe in Muhammad, we won't have to kill you. And this former Muslim said, their God, my God. Their God, my God. So when it was time for the execution, this man rose and followed his friends. And he did not renounce the name of Jesus. My hope and prayer is that our community of faith, that when we rub shoulders 
with the 750,000 souls living in the North Shore who don't know Jesus, that they will say, because of our love for God and for one another, that they will begin to say, their God, my God. That they would turn from their own ways and come back to Jesus. Because Jesus is so beautiful. Jesus is so righteous and he is holy. He is the reason that you and I live. And until he calls us home or until he comes back, let us be found faithful and watchful. Do not be deceived, friends. Don't be led astray by money or power or prestige. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. And as he does, we will become more Christ-like every day. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we invite you not only now, but as we step out of those doors into the mission field, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our places of commerce, Father, may we live a life that represents you well so that the people of the North Shore will say, their God, my God. Their Jesus is my Jesus. I don't know what doctrine or theology, but I see something different in how they live and love. And I want to know what kind of joy that they have, the unshakable hope that they have, the indestructible love that they have. Oh God, raise us up. You have destined us. You have strategically placed us in old Salem, Danvers. And we pray for revival in this land, oh God. We pray that your kingdom come and your will be done in this place, O Lord. Revive us, restore us in our day, O God. Help us to see your glory. Help us to press into the things of God. Help us to fall in love with you ever so deeply. Renew us, restore us, revive us, and help us to proclaim the redeeming message of Jesus Christ. Oh, how we love you and thank you for warning us, Jesus, to watch out. Bleppo. Help us not to be deceived, but to focus on you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.